Hello, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to do a couple of things. Well, first off, if you can't make your uh, Teensy uh, do something simple like say hello there and flash this light on and off, it might be worth it to watch the video before this. Uh, but in this particular video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show us how to hook up this tricolor LED. I'm going to do it two different ways. One way I'm going to uh, create a ground pin with one of the signal pins, okay? And the other way I'm going to go ahead and wire it off the uh, off to the side with uh, small snippets of wire. And I'm going to go ahead and turn these lights on with both digital right and analog right, so we're going to see some dimming and fading and whatnot. So if you're perfectly comfortable with doing that, uh, I would say you can go ahead and skip this video. And if not, well, then perhaps you should watch it. So let's uh, not wait any longer. I'll go ahead and get started. So first off, to hook this guy up, let's see if I can get this to focus. Um, come on. Well, it doesn't seem particularly fun. There we go. So notice that there's a ground and then there's an RGB, okay? Red, green, and blue. What we need to do is we need to make this ground pin uh, somehow, well, a common ground. Hook it to the ground currently being supplied by the ground of this uh, uh, USB cable. And if we look at the Teensy, one of the things that I want to do is I want to use what are called PWM pins. Okay, we're going to use them for dimming the light. We can't dim a light without pulse width modulation. We can turn a light on and off with any pin, but if ultimately what I want to do is be able to make, you know, the 16 million different colors, I need to be able to dim the red and dim the blue and dim the green and get it just to the right hue so I can generate all the different colors. If I want just nine different colors, uh, then I could just turn on, for example, the red and the blue and or the blue and the, the green, and then I can have particular colors, or the blue will look by itself, okay? So that would be just a digital right, turning them on and off. Analog right would be being able to fade them at different levels, okay? So I've decided what I really want to do is I want to tie into these pins right here. They're the most convenient. I have four of them side by side. I could use these, but working down the road, I'm thinking these might be useful for the motor driver. And so let's go ahead and do it first with just setting one of these pins to a ground, okay? And keep in mind, this is kind of a cheat. Uh, you know, any one of these pins, let me go back to this, any one of these pins on the Teensy can sink more than it can source. In other words, it can, it can absorb more current than it's able to deliver out. And we're going to play a game with that, but you have to be careful. Um, it's not that difficult to, you know, sink so much current to a particular pin that the flow of electrons inside this tiny chip through that little itty bitty microscopic gate gets so hot that we start damaging the, the circuitry. I don't recommend doing this routinely, but for this demonstration I think it'll be okay. So, uh, let's go back to this diagram. And the first three pins, we got the voltage, we got ground, we got a 3.3 volt. So I want to hook it into pins 23, 22, 21, and 20 to do this demonstration. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to skip three pins. I'm going to plug it in right here. So I have it currently hooked up to those four pins. Now, like I said, one of the things I want to do is I want to set one of these pins to ground. Again, if we look at this device very quickly, we can see that ground is right here. If it's facing, the LED is facing this direction. Ground is going to be here, and that means ground is going to be hooked up to pin 23. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to use the same basic piece of code. First thing we'll do is just make it flash, you know, the red, green, or blue light. I'm going to copy this. <coughs> And I'm going to make pin 23 an output. Now, I want to turn it into a ground pin. Okay. So what I really want to do is take digital right, and I want to make pin 23 
low. All right, so that's going to connect it to ground. So currently then, right now, I have pin 23 as a ground. We still have to turn on the red, green, and blue. So I'm going to paste this, and I'm going to make this 22, 21, and 20. Okay, I'm going to set all the other three pins, the red, green, and blue, to output. And let's just do a really simple test. Let's just set uh, pin 22, because 23 is going to be our ground. Okay, so I'm going to set that to be our ground. I'm going to go ahead and just turn on, for example, pin 22. Okay, and what we should see is this light flash on and off a particular color. Okay, and you can see it's lighting up blue. Excellent. Let's just try pin. Actually, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go ahead and create a variable up here. I'm going to make an integer variable. I'm going to call it uh, uh, blue LED is equal to pin 20. What it was it? 22. 22. Okay. So now I can substitute in everywhere where I have a 22 to make it easier to understand. I can substitute in this blue LED. Everything works exactly the same. I've just made it easier to understand. So let's go ahead now and try putting in a pin 21. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, it looks kind of funny, but that's actually green. Okay, the contrast of my monitor is a little bit funny. So now we know that green is 21. And I'm make that green LED. And I'm going to make a pin 21. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and assume that red is pin 20. Okay, so just to test that, I'm going to go ahead and load up red LED. I'm going to change the pin 20. There we go to red LED. Let's make it go on and off, and we should see red flash on and off. Well, that didn't work. What did I do? Oh, look at that. It didn't change this to pin 20. <clears throat> Sorry about that. And there you can see it's flashing red. Okay, so let me pause this. I'm going to clean this code up just a little bit and change these values, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I've added a few more lines of code here. Keep, uh, keep in mind that what I've done is I've set all these globals, these variables at the top here above setup, so they all have uh, clear defined names and positions. Um, I've set all of those pins to output. I made sure that the uh, pin, which is going to be our ground pin, is set the low off. Okay, it's ground, so uh, that way the electrons can have a path to ground. And then what I've done here is written a bunch of code, really simple, very crude, where I have turned on and off all the different colors of LED, including some combinations. So, for example, when the red one goes on right here, also turns on the green and it waits 100 milliseconds. In this case it turns off the red but then turns on the blue, waits 100 milliseconds, turns off the green, turns on the red, so we get to see these different hues and colors. Okay, Again it's either on and off, we don't have anything in between, there's no high or low. So let me set up a little high-low uh, demonstration with analog right and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I've written a piece of code here which uh, demonstrates the analog right very quickly and crudely. Um, and it introduces a lot of different things, and I'm sorry, and then there's going to be 
other videos that I can reference that explain these things in much more detail. But I've created a for loop. And within that for loop, I've created an integer variable called i. And I set it to equal to 0. And then this means that for as long as i is less than 255, I want to increment i by 1. So it's going to be 0, then it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. And in this case, I'm going to analog write the blue LED, the value of i, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And in each case, I'm going to separate that by 10 milliseconds. Okay, So every 10 milliseconds, it's going to slowly go from 0 to 255. And then here, it's going to go from 255 back down to 0, and it's going to reduce it by 1. So 255, 254, 253. So those numbers uh, all get put into the variable i, and it scrolls its way up, and it scrolls its way down. I should tidy this code, I'm sorry. And then it does the same thing with the green and the red. Okay, So if you look at it, you'll see the blue get brighter and brighter, and then dimmer and dimmer. And it switches to the green, brighter and brighter, and dimmer and dimmer. And finally, the red, which doesn't show up very well, brighter and brighter, and dimmer and dimmer. Okay? So let me go ahead now and rewire this LED in a method which I think is more reasonable so we don't use the pin and set it to ground. We're actually going to hook it to system ground. We're going to have it hooked to ground properly so we don't have to worry about saturating that pin with just too much current. So let me hook this up, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I've hooked this all up, and you'll notice a couple of big changes. One is I decided to plug this in <clears throat> because I wanted to bridge between the ground on this side and the ground on this side. Okay, And the reason I did that, <clears throat> this goes back to this, ground on the Teensy, which is going to be getting its grounding source from the USB cable plugged in here, is on this side of the chip. So I put a small staple of wire right here between that pin and the common ground. But I want to be able to ground this device on this side. Okay, So I need to then be able to connect this ground here to this ground here. So I inserted this uh, voltage uh, provider here so that we tie those common grounds together. So it's taken care of without an additional wire. And if we look, if we zoom in, you can see what I did. I actually took pins. Now let me go back to this diagram here. <clears throat> I decided I don't really want to have that one set up as a ground like I did before, that one 20, pin 23. So I'm going to make 23, 22, and 21 are going to be my red, green, and blue pins. Okay, Because I'm going to have a ground hooked up on the breadboard. This wire right here is going to be the ground which connects to this ground pin, this outermost pin on the LED. Then I have pins 23, 22, and 21 bridged across to the next three columns. Okay, And then, if I plug this in, you can see that it works just great. So we got the blue dimming, and then we'll have the green dimming and everything else. Now let's look at the code. What did I change? Okay, Like I said, I don't want to use this anymore. In fact, I'm just going to delete it. I do not have that ground pin set up in 23. I have blue, green, and red set up in 23, 22, and 21. I do not need to make that ground pin an output, so I'm going to get rid of it. Nor do I need to set it low. Okay, But I do have to redefine these as 23, 22, and 21. Everything else remains exactly the same. I shifted everything up by one pin number. Okay, So now you can see it. It's going to be off to the side. I now have ground going to the common bus, and I don't have to worry about saturating the pin. Everything is set. So now we can consider building more stuff onto this and possibly get to our robot here pretty soon. I will see you shortly.